Well, we can go through this pretty quick. So let's go over some things that could happen and what could be the causes. So you injected the patient and you waited a minute and there's no contrast. So what are the things that could have gone wrong? Extravasation. Your stopcock could be wrong. Make sure you injected the contrast and you didn't pick up the wrong thing and you gave two things of saline. Make sure the contrast agent was activated. Make sure the IV didn't infiltrate. Make sure the clamp on the extension tubing is open. And make sure the contrast mode setting on the ultrasound machine is the appropriate one. If you have high MI, you're going to bust the bubbles as they come in. And another key thing to remember, especially if you're doing things interventionally, is that um, anesthesia likes to put these little filters in the IV lines. Those filters are really good. They filter out all the bubbles. <laughs> so if you're doing things in the intensive care unit or the operating room, make sure that you have them put an IV you know, in the hand or the elbow and the port is very close. So you're always injecting distal to a filter. And the same thing is like anesthesia likes to inject very high. If you do that, you end up stretching out the bubbles in the saline and then you get a very weak injection. So whenever you do this, they have to inject very close to where the IV goes in. Okay, similar, you've injected, but you got a really weak injection. So again, it's the same kind of things. Make sure the dose was correct. If you have both Optison, I'm sorry, Definity and Lumison, the doses are a factor of 10 different. If you picked up the wrong one, you may have actually only injected a tenth of the dose. Make sure the contrast was not injected to the saline. So if you turn the little knob the wrong way and you inject the saline or the contrast and it goes into the saline, you dilute the bubbles. And now when you inject it, you got a very weak bolus. Make sure you didn't infiltrate the IV. Make sure that the power is low. And make sure the extension tubing is not too long or small diameter because then the saline flush cannot deliver the contrast into the vein. When you're using small parts, so breast, testicles, not so much for thyroid, the center frequency of the transducer is higher. And the bubbles tend to resonate at about 2.5 megahertz. So if you have a very high frequency transducer, you don't get as much res um, nonlinear re uh, effect. So you have to maybe double the dose for these things. Vendors are now having tr more bandwidth in their transducers. So if you're using a higher frequency transducer, trying to go to the pen setting, which will lower the frequency and give you a uh, better uh, enhancement. Again, make sure you completely activated the contrast agent. And again, make sure that there's no filter and no late saline. You always got to inject the saline. <coughs> so you injected, but you got a good bolus. But within 20 seconds, there's no contrast left. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to go over this. So confirm that the MI was low. Make sure that the contrast was adequately activated. And make sure you're not using a very high imaging frequency. So again, if you use a very high frequency transducer that it doesn't have the capability of doing the contrast at a low frequency, you're not going to get very much uh, nonlinear response um, and you're not going to get as good uh, a image. So there's loss of signal in the near field. And I don't have a pointer, but if you look the top one centimeter of that liver, there's no contrast. So this used to happen a lot more in older equipment, not so much now. And really the MI is too high and you're burning off bubbles because we had a higher power output right by the, the transducer. So I think now as we've gotten more better equipment, um, the power levels have dropped so we don't see this as much. Um, but make sure that the focal zone is below the lesion you're looking at. Because again, where the focus zone is where the most energy deposition is, that's you're going to have the most bubble destruction. So if you put it in the middle of the image, you're going to notice you have a stripe in the middle of the image because you're busting bubbles more there. So you always put the focal zone uh, distal. So opposite, there's a loss of enhancement in the far field. So, you know, we've talked about this before. Um, in general, 
Um, sometimes we have difficulty below six centimeters. I think as we've gotten better and better equipment, there are some people we can get to 10 centimeters. And with one of the new vendors, we've actually got to 20 centimeters. But sometimes you may have problem. And again, um, Stephanie said go one click up with the MI. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, what may not be intuitive, sometimes going one click down actually will help you too because you'll burn off less bubbles and you may be able to see deeper. But obviously try to rotate the patient or put the lesion closer to the transducer in those cases. And now a lot of the vendors have several settings on the transducer. If you use the lower frequency or the pen mode, you may be able to penetrate a little bit deeper. You've injected contrast and now you have shadowing. So we talked about this. If you inject too many bubbles, the bubbles actually are very good reflectors. They can create shadowing. So if you do see this, it will eventually dissipate as the bubbles are destroyed. You have less concentration, but again, now you've missed the arterial phase. So then what you can do is try a second injection with half the dose. Um, or if you're injecting really, really too fast, you get this high concentration, uh, you can inject a little bit slower. And again, this is more an issue, I think, in the cardiac world because you've got this big sac called the heart that you've got so many bubbles. So they like to inject very slow, which is not what we want to do. We want to inject very fast because we want a very good arterial phase. Um, again, if you want to give a second injection, but you still have bubbles left from the first, you don't want to use that flash. Because the flash does the MI for just a few frames, so you're only busting bubbles in that one field of view. It'll take you forever. But what you can do is get out of contrast, go into your standard mode, either go to color Doppler or whatever, some high MI technique, um, wide field of view, and just put it over the aorta or the heart where you've got a lot of bubbles, and that'll destroy the bubbles very fast. I like color Doppler because you'll see all the blooming from the bubbles, and then when the blooming is gone, you know the bubbles are gone. So here's a nice one. You've got this band that there's no bubbles. Okay. Again, we used to see this a lot more. You may see it now, but again, MIs are a lot lower. So what happens is if you're scanning in one spot and you're scanning in one spot and you're scan you're busting all the bubbles in that one spot, right? Now if you quickly turn your transducer 90 degrees, that plane where you are imaging has less bubbles than in front and in the back, so you'll see that stripe. So sometimes you'll notice you're standing there, and then now you're going to go to scan. You'll notice as you move the transducer, you'll see it be a lot brighter because you were busting bubbles. That will go away very quickly because the bubbles on either side will now fill back in to that gap, and you won't see that. And again, now that we've got lower MIs, we don't see this quite as much because we don't have as much bubble destruction. But you'll notice sometimes when you start scanning, you'll see that you got brighter, that there's more bubbles. And again, that was because you were busting bubbles where you're looking at, and the area that you weren't scanning now has more bubbles. Okay, And sometimes we can see this in a hemangioma because you've got slower blood flow. We're busting the bubbles a lot more because they're hanging around more. Um, and you can see some effects, particularly uh, with hemangiomas. Um, how long do we need to scan? I think I'm going to leave that for the sections that we're going to talk about specific organs. Um, and the only other thing I'd like to mention, and I think Stephanie will talk about this in her talks, is when you're doing uh, dynamic imaging and time intensity curves, there are certain things you can't do. Right? You're going to have to save the entire clip. You can't do little pieces because the software has to have one single clip. You can change any settings, including the gain, because that will adjust the uh, output that's coming out of the machine and will give you bad curves. So if you're going to do quantification, you have to keep everything the same. You never change anything. Um, and you have to have a continuous clip uh, to do that. And then we talked about informed consent. So right now, since we have the agent is approved at least for one use on any of the three agents, you don't necessarily have to have written informed consent. Whatever you're doing for CT and MR is appropriate. If you want to tell the patient you're using it off-label, if you're doing kidneys or uh, EVAR stents or something else, I think that's an appropriate thing to do. But you don't need to have written informed consent for that.
in terms of monitoring, there was a black box and there was a period of time that we had to monitor patients for half an hour and take their blood pressure and do all kind of crazy things. The black box for all those things has been removed. There still is a black box warning, um, but it really doesn't affect the things that we do. Um, so you really don't need to monitor the patient. <coughs> and again, in terms of complications uh, or contraindications, only contraindication is hypersensitive to the agents uh, themselves. Remember that we're using um, sulfur hexafluoride. That is not the same as the sulfur that's an antibiotic. So if somebody tells you, I'm allergic to sulfur from antibiotics, that has nothing to do, that's a different kind of sulfur than the gas we have. So that's not a contraindication uh, for that. And again, in pregnant and lactantic women have not been evaluated, but we do do those. We make sure that it's appropriate that we're doing it when we do that and document in a chart that we thought about it before we do it and that it was an appropriate thing to do. Any questions? So I'll get us back on track a little bit. Yes. What's the? Oh, um, you'd have to look at the package insert. Um, the agents usually, maybe Steve knows off the top of his head, but I mean, it's usually gone in 10 minutes. 